Cape Cod Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. And welcome into the Sunday Journal. I'm your host, Matt Pitta. Thanks for being with us today. On this edition of our program, we get together each week to talk about issues facing Cape Cod, the islands, and all of southeastern Massachusetts. Welcome in to the Sunday Journal. And today we're going to be talking about an issue. It's really kind of been a hot-button issue throughout the summer here on Cape Cod, and it has to deal with the issue of homelessness in downtown Hyannis, the Noah Shelter, etc. And we brought in studio to talk in depth about this, the CEO of the Housing Assistance Corporation, Rick Presbury. And Rick has been at the forefront of this issue for uh, over four over four decades now, Rick, not to make you sound old or anything. But, uh, I'm not in. that old, eh? I don't age. <laughs> exactly. Welcome in. It's good to see you, as Good always. to see you, Matt. It's nice to be back. Nice to have you back here, too. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. It's a lot of fun being back where we started things off uh, a long yeah, time ago, yeah, a couple of decades sure. ago. Yeah, that's great. Wonderful <laughs> so, memories. That's absolutely. Uh, Rick, this is a, it's a, it's a big, it's a complicated issue, <clears> uh, a lot of facets to it, so we're going to try to get through it as much as we can here this morning. Uh, we're going to start out with more of kind of what the headlines are from the last couple of days as people have been following this issue, and uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of simplify it, but there's been this kind of increase of, uh, of a homeless population on the streets of Hyannis over the past couple of months. There have been some meetings about it among the community and the Civic Association, etc., and I know you folks have been involved with it as well. And one thing that has happened most recently, as we said, kind of the most recent headline is that as we speak, uh, it was a couple of days back when the Housing Assistance Corporation Board voted to actually move the NOAA shelter from its winter street location which is near downtown Hyannis. So let's just start out there, Rick. Let's talk about that decision, if you would. Hack has actually gone on the record now that you yeah. do want to move the facility. Let me give a little history first. We originally opened the Noah Shelter, I believe, in 1984 in the armory in Hyannis at the request of the town. And we didn't really want to do it. It's really not exactly our business. We're a housing agency, but nobody else would do it, and we were responding to a need. So we opened it at the armory, and then two years later, we moved it to its present location on Winter Street. And so it's been there for 30 years. That's a long time. And uh, during that period of time, there's always been some, some grumbling. Obviously, there's the issue of compassionate care for a needy population versus having a downtown that appeals to uh, tourists and other people visiting and makes the uh, maximizes the effect of people coming to Hyannis to support local businesses, restaurants, and so forth. And so... Uh, in uh, very recent times, the last couple of years, we've been meeting for almost two years with a group of five people representing uh, diverse interests, uh, including the police department, representing the town, the department, including Duffy Health Center, uh, the Ohio Civic Association, the Business Improvement District, and so forth, and had very constructive conversations about this. And we've gotten to the point here where Although we think moving, and I think the group agrees, moving the facility to a a less downtown location will be helpful to downtown in a number of ways, partially perception, and will uh, enable us to have a facility that really can it makes it possible to do a greater variety of things that help people. Meet their needs. At this point, is there a location, uh, an, an area of of town or the Cape that you folks are looking at right now? Well, uh, the issue is partly siting. Is it easy to site a facility like this, particularly after all this publicity and, and controversy? No, it isn't. I mean, nobody wants it near them. You know, when the sheriff went to relocate the jail, for example, he ended up going to Mass Military Reservation as a result of the various controversies. When the president tried to move Guantanamo, he couldn't find a place in the United States to put it. So we have to use our skills to find an appropriate place where it's, of course, not near a neighborhood, uh, you know, and so forth, and it has enough space so that we can do some pretty good things. So we're looking at the same place as anybody from Barnstable would look at that are like that. And we had a false start several years ago of moving into a very remote location where we'd provide transportation and so forth, and we'd do housing and so forth, but that fell through. So we're looking, this, we're early on in the process. Obviously, uh, if we announce a particular piece of property, which we don't have now, uh, it would immediately create a firestorm of interest. It probably would raise the price of the facility and so forth and so on, and the results would be failure. So it has to be a careful process in order to succeed. Is it fair to say it would be a mid-Cape uh, location, a town of Barnesville location at this point? Um, 
You know, it doesn't have to be. Uh, both the chief and I are on exactly the same page here. Uh, in some ways, I'd like to have it somewhere else, but I think it's probably most likely to be here because the community will accept it here because we can improve on what presently exists. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the many discussions about what Hyannis is. You know, Hyannis is Cape Cod's downtown. And the the, the chief recently published a list of 72 agencies. Well, there are certainly 72 organizations you know, helping in some way. You know, he had the Internal Revenue Service on the list. I doubt that Holmes must come here for the IRS. And and so the list really is a representation of Hyannis as a place that businesses and services of a whole variety of kinds, public, private, and otherwise, come to to provide services to people. And so everybody comes here. So that presents a problem because Hyannis is an attractive place to come to. You know, people sometimes, people who like Osseville and Chatham, for example, scoff at Hyannis. But for most of us, Hyannis is, is a great place. I really like Hyannis, and that's not, I'm not just saying that. I mean, I've lived here for 41 years, lived in Hyannis for 17, and it's, it's my hometown at this point. I like it. And uh, homeless people don't particularly bother me. I don't see the worst of it because the worst of it is, you know, is incidental and occasional. Have I ever seen anything objectionable? Yes. But do I, on a routine basis, when I come here on a summer night to go to dinner? No, I don't see anything. You know, it's a bunch of people who are, you know, walking around in shorts with kids and stuff, you know, doing things. That's what all I ever see. But not to say I don't recognize that homeless individuals who are on drugs or alcoholics or have mental illness don't do objectionable things. I know darn well they do. I know it better than anybody. You know, we run a facility for them every single night of the year, 365 nights a year. So I think, but I think a reasonable attitude needs to be taken by everybody. If we want it moved, we have to cooperate to do it. We can improve upon things. And then when it is moved, we tackle the rest of the problem. That's what's going on here. And I think it's a very positive thing. Uh, that's happening. One of the issues that has come up throughout the summer is what has been apparently an, an increase in the number of people who are homeless who have been on the streets. Uh, the chief, as you mentioned, uh, who you referred to, the chief had told us and other members of the media that he had conversations with people in Boston that since they lost that shelter out on, uh, I think, Long Island, out in Boston, that, that we saw some people come down here. So uh, what are we seeing? What, what's been going on on the streets uh, over the past couple of months? Well, right? two things. Those shelter beds in Boston have been replaced anyway, but uh, you know, do people come from other other areas? Sometimes, yes, absolutely. Whether it's other areas, the Cape or, or off Cape, but so our survey show, and we only let people stay one night who come from off Cape, and so people would say, "Well, how do you figure out where they come from?" Well, we do our best to figure it out. So last month, uh, it last uh, I don't know what period of time this is for, but we had of a total of uh, of uh, 134. Let me get my data straight here. No. We had uh, 95 people over the course of, of 400 people who came here last year that spent one or two nights. And so the one, you know, not doesn't mean that all the one or two nighters are people from off Cape, but that's an indication of what it, what it amounts to. So that's something we've worked on for a long time. If you come here because you hear that this is a mecca for homeless, uh, which is the word that's frequently used, um, and you only get to stay at the shelter one or at the most two nights, and that policy actually is very strict now, so it's only one night. It's not really the place to come for shelter, but what you then have is three times as many people, 150 or so, as who are at the shelter staying in camps in, in and around Hyannis, uh, maybe bleeding over into Yarmouth, some and all. And the camps... Uh, you know, the camps are a pretty serious problem because they are totally lawless. What goes on in the Oshel isn't lawless. No. And so the the police and the town have dealt with that by cleaning out the camps periodically. But there are issues with federal, the, the uh, Department of Justice over that issue because there was a Des Moines, Iowa case that concluded that a town couldn't eliminate the camps altogether unless they had shelter facilities where people could sleep inside adequate to meet the need because people have a basic need sleep, and so you can't clean out the camps all the time. Well, you know, people can have various attitudes about that. I, you know, people are doing a lot of illegal things in the camps that they shouldn't be doing, and it isn't ideal. But, you know, you can, if you come to the Cape in the summer and you're doing drugs or alcohol or mentally ill, or maybe you're doing something else and you don't have any money, and you have all these camps on conserva- public conservation land, land, and it's warm out, 
you know, that's what happened. Mm. And I think we can all understand that. I don't think it's a good idea. It's not the way I want to live my life. Yeah. But some do, and we have to deal with that as a community. A couple of years ago, I think it was two years ago, when they did a clean out of some around town, including some that were just off of Willow Street yeah. in downtown Highness. I went along with the police as they did some clean outs. And I got to tell you, Rick, I mean, as you're pointing out, it is absolutely no way to live. I mean, it was. No. It was really, I mean, it was very bad. Let's just put no, it that it's, way. It's uh, really worse than you can imagine. And the the tragedy is that's what people's lives are actually like. So what do we do to get to the root of that? And, and you know, having covered this issue for a whole long time uh, with, you, with you folks, I know that there is a segment, and, and if I'm not really phrasing this right, please, please correct me, but there is a kind of a segment of people who are homeless who have almost, almost chosen that as their life, if you will, or, you know, that's... The, they're not looking to kind of get out of their situation. Is that, is, isn't that? there some that are like that? Well, we all choose some self-destructive yeah. behaviors. <laughs> and, uh, like pizza for me. <laughs> yeah. And um, Burgers. we all work a good deal of our lives yeah. trying to minimize those self-destructive behaviors. Some people choose much greater self-destructive behaviors. Yeah. We see it in our business all the time where people are going along well in their life and they make a choice that's terrible. And they get into something they can't get out of. So I, I'm not... I'm not being overly sympathetic here. I'm just, I want to deal with reality in solving this problem. So, uh, what, is alcohol and drug addiction a choice? I don't know. We all see some inherited characteristics that make people more likely to be addicts. Um, you know, I smoked when I was younger and I gave it up, you know, and um, it, it wasn't that hard for me. But for a lot of people, it's very, very difficult. And I don't have an addictive personality. What's kind of the long term solution here? Yeah, though? I know. That's what yeah. you really want to know. <laughs> exactly. What's the secret formula? Correct. I'd be like Richard Nixon a well, while after I'm elected, yes. I'll let you know what I'm <laughs> exactly. going to do to end the war. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I think that uh, the honest answer to that is we're not going to eliminate it, we're going to reduce it. And I think like nuclear proliferation, you know, that I'm bringing up all these big issues. you got to reduce it. You're not going to eliminate it. And, you know, nobody wants all these nuclear weapons around, do they really? But uh, we got to – and so I think the goal is to reduce it. It's moving the shelter is the first step to reducing homeless and hyenas and getting better services to reduce homelessness overall. Second step, I think, I believe, is to, is to police – maybe not, that's not the right word – but to keep track of those camps and to minimize illegal behavior in the camps. Maybe people have a right to sleep there, but doesn't mean they have a right to do a lot of the other things they do there. The third thing, and people people blame, you know, deinstitutionalization, you know, going back to the 80s on this whole problem, that we don't have institutions, which were, you know, obviously horrible in a lot of cases, and that's why they were, they were put away. But for people with not enough beds for people with mental, uh, mental illness, not enough beds for people with addictions. And, you know, you, you read about all the beds we have for uh, addicts to go to. But when you actually get right down to it, we don't have adequate choices for people to go into treatment. And sometimes the programs are inappropriate for a particular need. Let's say it's a pain-based situation. Uh, and so we need to have more resources to deal with addiction in our society. That's pretty obvious. But nevertheless, at a local level, sometimes people think, well, why don't they just get, you know, go there or go here or do this or do that? You know, it's it's a little trickier than that. And I think part of it is... When you're looking to, to change someone's behavior, we don't have the science quite down yet, how you do that. I mean, I know what we do at Hack to get to change somebody's behavior. And one of the, one of the denominators of it is giving people a useful, meaningful life. An opportunity for a useful, meaningful life makes all the difference. Because if somebody gets dried out and they don't have anything to do, they can't go to work or they won't go to work or nobody will hire them, and they don't feel like they can accomplish anything, they've never been reinforced in their ability to accomplish things, then they fall back into bad habits. Rick Presby is my guest today on the Sunday Journal, the CEO of the Housing Assistance Corporation. And we're talking about this issue really became uh, prevalent again this past summer here on Cape Cod, the issue of homelessness in downtown Highness. And as we said right at the top of our segment, uh, Hack has indeed voted to move the NOAA shelter from its uh, location on Winter Street near the downtown area of Highness into a, a location yet to be determined. And that will be taking place over, it's going to be a multi-month process, if not a year process, yeah. I think the key to our the probability of our success is help and cooperation from the town of Barnstable. And I think that we're pretty close to getting that, although, you know, the town councilors, each town council naturally has their own point of view, and on September 17th, there's going to be a council meeting to hear about that. I think with the support and cooperation of the town, this can take place. Without it, it can't. Uh, 
And so we're really hoping that town councilors take a broad view of this and help do what's best for the village of Hyannis and the town of Barnstable and the clients themselves. And I think it will all work then. But that's going to be a bit of a a, 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 a intense communication job, maybe a selling job, but I don't like the word selling in this, in this instance. People have to thoroughly understand what the options are. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rick, as you take a look at the, the future of the agency and, you know, at, at some point perhaps moving it out of the downtown area, you were referred a little bit earlier in our interview, we have a couple minutes left to go here, about the fact that the chief has said that a lot of the social services are concentrated in downtown Highness, and I've always thought that you see a lot of that because the Cape, as a region, doesn't have the type of extensive public transportation network like a big city of Boston yeah. or Worcester, so people have to be near where they can get to the services. But with that said, uh, do you think there's going to be any appetite for the uh, for the Chathams and the uh, you know the sandwiches of the world to maybe take on some of the burden of some of these agencies, either you know a small Smaller type facility. I think that's sort of a backwards question. I mean, okay. um, if we're talking about services and not just talking about the NOAA shelter, right. you know, it'd be I'm nice to have the NOAA shelter in multiple locations so you don't have critical mass. Right. I agree with that. It costs three times as much. Correct. But the services want to be here. They have the the rental property here for them to rent. They have we have wastewater here. You have everything right here. It is where everybody wants these things to be. Where do you want the hospital to be, for example? It's one of the services on the list. You don't want it down in you know Montemoy or no. I mean, <laughs> and, and you don't, do you want to have you know fifteen hospitals on the Cape Cod? We have five fire departments in Barnstable, which is always uh, you know <laughs> another, a controversial that's subject. That's a topic for another week. <laughs> yeah, I bring up all the troubles and things. Don't so you know you want the hospital here. And people come to the hospital. They come from all over the Cape. Homeless people use the hospital a tremendous amount. Oh, yeah. I mean, the emergency room is populated with homeless people. Just mm-hmm. ask the ER physicians. Sure. And so, you know, you've got to have the hospital here. So some things as an urban center you're going to have, period. And you should embrace that because they provide services for everybody in our society. Rick, we're just about out of time. What's the next thing we're going to see concrete? There's a meeting coming up, you said, with the town September council. 17th. Okay. And that you're, you, the hack will be there to talk about we'll the shelter? To talk about the shelter. All right. Well, uh, Rick Presby is the CEO of the Housing Assistance Corporation. This is an issue that's not going away and we will continue to talk about it and continue to inform you on what's happening with this. And, uh, Rick, it's always good to see you. Thanks for coming in studio. Good to see you, Matt. Thanks. It's, uh, it's nice, been a pleasure. Have a nice September. Okay, we'll thanks. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Thanks for being with us today on this segment of the Sunday Journal. I'm your host, Matt Pitta. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.